Welcome back, everybody, to more Pro League action here on Monday. We got SK Telecom T1 versus Spenu coming up here in the second match. I am Valdez with me is Nungle tonight. That is right, Valdez. This should be actually a pretty fun match. I'm really excited for this one. It's going to be the highlight of the night, no doubt. Yeah. Whenever SK Telecom is playing for me, I'm just like, yeah, I know this is going to be a good day. There are going to be good games. We are going to see, like, top of the top line players, tier one, tier S players come out tonight. Yeah, they are the S team, SKT1, and I mean, <laughs> <laughs> the uh, you know, Spenu, they have a lot of history, they have a lot of great players, a lot of the legendary players from old, and they still can mix it in with the best. They still have uh, some really great ideas, unique strategies, and uh, unique play styles that we don't usually see these days. Well, you saw a classic shake the hand of Leenok. Leenok very uh, respectful to Classic. In my mind, I would put Classic up at, like, number one at, you know, in terms of form and where he's at these days, and even in terms of, like, results. Uh, number one Protoss, at least. Yeah, I think tonight we have the number one Protoss with the number one Terran. And hard to say for the Zerg. Sue is amazing. He's been looking like he's number one right now in terms of uh, Zerg play, but... He's, he's looking like it. He's yeah. looking like it. He's very close. Basically, we have all the big boys here today. They brought everyone out for this. They they want to make sure they send a message with this round. Yeah. You know, it's the round they don't have to win. It's the round they don't even have to do well in. Yeah. But it's the round they still are bringing out the A team. And didn't they get like 7-0 in the last round as yeah. well? Maybe they're like, oh, we should get 7-0 again. Let's make history, guys. Yeah. We might as well. We have all the best players. Let's so. make it the most dominant like season of pro league we've ever yeah. had as a team and it's really in cool brood war or starcraft too like these guys are just winning everything right now yep. i don't know what they're feeding the the players but as we said it before classic and innovation especially the the tippy top the best it really gets for their respective races but here we do have the matchup tonight sk telecom versus spenu classic versus leenock is the first game and Sue versus Dongrigu on Terraform, a ZBZ. Dark versus Curious, another ZBZ on Coda, And then Innovation versus MMA, another TBT on Echo. Yeah, you know, I, I'm liking uh, I'm liking these matchups. Each one is going to be, in my opinion, very exciting. I'm so happy we got a couple of ZBZs in there. Classic versus Leenok. Leenok used to be incredible at his ZVP. And Classic is just the best Protoss in the world right now. Yeah. Uh, Leenok for the first round, I think was really on top of his game. He was doing quite well. But ever since then, hasn't shown quite the same games. Not really sure what happened. But, and uh, uh, not really feeling the Leenok hype train these days, at yeah, least. Yeah, certainly not. That uh, purple down with Darius says a lot about where he's at right now. Uh, Innovation versus MMA. Also a rematch from the most recent uh, IEM Gamescom. They played, uh, I believe it was a best of five there. Innovation winning pretty one-sidedly. Yeah. So MMA definitely going to have some history there. Maybe not as confident as you would like to be. Here are the viewpoints. SKT will secure a spot in the round four postseason with a win. And Curious will be in the top 20 lists of the winner's ranking with a win. All right. Well, I guess that's something. I don't know if it really means much. <laughs> it's not going to get you to Kespa Cup this time, Curious. But still, it'd be a nice achievement to have. Top 20 is the, you know, the two pages you guys usually see. We show the first one <laughs> and the second one. So just to clarify that just a bit. I guess they were really looking for a second viewpoint. <laughs> and that was it. Well, here we go. Two and two against Zerg, surprisingly, considering how well this guy has been doing in every league he's been playing in. Yeah. And I would say, like, the only reason he's not up there with Hero, with Zest, at, you know, the most winning players is just that he wasn't played that much in rounds one and two. Uh, he had only three games total in both of those rounds, but already three games played in this round. It's not even half over. So he definitely geared it up towards the end of this year, and he's been playing better and better, and he's been seeing more time because of that. And here is Leenok, 5-2 and two against Protoss. I feel like a lot of that was in the past. He really hasn't had that success recently. Still a great player there. A very dangerous, very innovative ideas. I got faith, Valdez. You got faith? Did you vote on him? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I still... I, I love that hair, by the way. That oh, yeah. purple hair is looking fantastic. That's the Zerg hair. That's what you got to do if you're a Zerg. 
Should I do that, Belles? Yeah. You All gotta right. dye your entire mane purple. The mane, the purple mane. Do it, Big Blade. All right, Belles, you're the boss. Thanks for coming to game number one now. Classic versus Leenock in Cactus Valley. Up here in the top left, in the orange from SK Telecom T1, the Protoss player, it is classic. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Someone's keen for classic. Mm. And up here in the top right, we do have the Spenu Zerg player, Leenok, looking to create an upset today. Whoa, she loves I him. I love you. She, she doesn't look too enthusiastic behind it, though. She's uh, She ain't playing hard to get. She knows what she wants. <laughs> she loves him. Straight up. It's, uh, he wouldn't love that hair. I mean, well, we certainly love it. Like, I love it. I would have that sign up as well. Yeah. If you were a GG girl, maybe if you grow out your hair just a little bit more, yeah, you could throw some makeup on you. Put on some high heels and <laughs> strut my stuff about this. Maybe I can be a GG girl. Yeah. You try to make it work. I'd work it. Remember last year we had, like, I forget exactly what it was. I think it was, like, the Race Wars or something. Uh, it was in between rounds two and three, I think it was. It, it's been a while now. I'm not even exactly sure what it was. But maybe if we had, like, another fun event like that, we could have you be a GG girl. <laughs> Me and Wolf can cast, and you can you can be on the floor. Yeah, I'll be on the floor doing the uh, the signs. Strutting your stuff. <laughs> Strutting my stuff. <laughs> yeah. Maybe one day, Valdez, no. if I get paid enough money. <laughs> Is that the dream? <laughs> paid enough so you can be a GG girl? Yeah. <laughs> I just want to be a K-pop girl. That's really my end game. <laughs> that's why you came to Korea that's in the first place. That's like, I mean. I, it's never for StarCraft. It's no. just... It's just it's a, all about the K-pop. It's all about the K-pop. Yeah. Still learning that Korean as well. It's, it's probably one of the things I should focus on, Valdez. Yeah. You're definitely going to need to know some Korean... Uh, if you want to be a K-pop star, I don't know. There's like sometimes they'll say English in their in their songs. Maybe you can be that one gem, the one standout girl. Yeah, I'd be like that well, speaks English like, only. Her English is really good. Yeah. Look at this deny, by the way. That's a ruthless probe. Yeah, that's disgusting. That probe getting there, getting the initial scout. You know, the right scout there on the right side, uh, not going the opposite direction, uh, forces out the pool and then blocks that hatch for so long. Beautiful. Disgusting classic. Disgusting, but beautiful, beautiful micro. Yeah. Fantastic. Overlord sees the forge, knows that a pool must come next. Does not want to be thrown down. Or, sorry, that the pool is already done. Mm. Cannot be thrown down a double hatch like he would want to originally. Yeah. Looks like he's going to follow it up here. He's going to get it pretty early on here at 3.55 about. That third base, as you said, not the most greedy you can be, but he's going to get it pretty quick, regardless. Yeah, it's kind of just going to that standard build you would against any sort of forge opening like this. The timings, everything slows down when the forge is the first building you see. So, okay, I don't have to worry about any sort of tech rush, any sort of warp gate rush. It's all in this timeline that it's so much easier for Zerg to deal with. Classic though, we know how he likes to play his uh, Protoss versus Zerg, and he likes to slow things down in a big way. He wants it to go later, as late as possible, so he can make the perfect army. Mm -hmm. You know, what we used to see on this map a lot, when times were changing in this match, so Zergs weren't having the best time, like a little bit after the Stalker Sentry uh, meta from the Protoss was a lot of Hydra timings on this map. You know, hit a, hit about like 55 drones and just pump out as many lings uh, with speed and a bunch of Hydras and try to just punish your Protoss opponent. Uh, do you expect that kind of thing out of Leenok, or do you think he's going to play for the later game or go for some other kind of timing? I think it might be his best bet to go for that kind of timing. If he, if he can, like, reproduce what we've see, been seeing, like, Sudo as well, like, just go for these really crisp Hydra timings. You don't even need Hydra speed, just get Hydra range go into that natural while there's like not many force fields not many stalkers i think it's a very possible thing to do against someone like classic who is going to be playing for that later game who wants to get a third base as well yeah i'm also going to start out here with the stargate so going to have less units on the ground 
as long as he can successfully defend against the Oracle Harassment, something that Classic is fantastic in in this matchup, by the way. You know, maybe Leonok can search for that timing. We'll see what he wants to do here in a bit. Yeah, I feel like, yeah, it's really going to come down to how much he can defend against this. If he, if he takes too much damage, everything gets slowed down to a point where that Hydra timing isn't as viable. Mm -hmm. Gonna get a bit of a later speed here. Wants to get that out eventually. Kind of denotes that he will be making a bunch of wings in this matchup at least. And we do see the immediate uh, robotics facility coming out actually next for Classic. Gonna forgo the Twilight Council for now. Yeah, straight into Robo. So maybe a little bit quicker on the Colossus. Get some observers out. Make sure he knows exactly what's going on and he's prepared for any sort of timing that might come his way. Oh, look at that. Two evolution chambers. So maybe we're going to see the 1-1 one, one Link style. Perhaps wants yeah. to transition later into Ultras if it goes that late. Now that I'm thinking about it, some of the games that we saw Lena play, um, also Lucera likes to play this style a bit, you know, on Bonnie Research Station as well, another map that they like to do this on. Uh, just d defend, defend, really get that tech out, go to Ultras as you were saying. And uh, already we do see the melee upgrades coming up here, so it looks like he will be going for that style. I'm not sure if I like this style on this map there. This map is, uh, you know, the choke points in this map can be pretty ruthless. And if you're going ultras and you're trying to, like, engage in the third or the natural, things can get just a little bit too tricky. And it's going to really come down to how soon does Classic identify what's going on as well. Does he have the Immortal Count out when the time comes? I believe also we've seen Classic deal with this build with an arc on timing though he didn't go for the twilight really? build this time around i believe it was him last time we saw it, it was on vani research he saw what the zerg was doing early enough that he simply went for gateway arc on and just tried to kill him i think i actually remember that game you're talking about yeah it was actually a really cool style it's it's a sick hard counter to what this style is all about which is surviving on ling and fester with upgrades until you get to ultras yeah by the way, with the style that Classic is going for, really putting on zero pressure against Leonok. Leonok's been able to get 69 drones, and that was all on two links. He had two links, four queens up until this point, where he's really uh, pumping out these links now, but getting a sick economy here. Still only on three bases. Got one macro hatch, though. There's that fourth. Yeah, everything kind of lining up well. Seems like Leonok's really understanding what Classic is all about with his current build order and how he's playing it. And 1-1's one, one still on the way here, nearly finished. He's just going to poke in, try and get an idea of the composition. Apply some pressure, but nothing too much. Look at that, a War Prism on the way as well. And the real Phoenix. Hmm. Just one for now. I think this is the first, but... Perhaps fearful of a Muta Switch at some point? Perhaps. I mean, there was a Spire coming down. It's near completion now. But he's also... Yeah, this is this is a very interesting style from Classic. He loves to take his time, that's for sure. I mean, plus two on the way. Charge on the way as well. He could just be going for that build we're thinking about, you know, dropping down a lot of Archon soon. This is going to do a lot of damage. So they are only plus one zealot, so they're not going to be two shutting lings. Yeah. Lings are one one currently, and uh, no charge just yet. So the harass is not quite there, hundred percent just yet. And finally, the units coming back, dealing with this. Will he save that queen? No, it will go down. Oh, that's a big blow considering that hive only just started as well. That's going to be a queenless base for some time to come. Mm -hmm. There are two war prisms out on the map. And only one Colossus was made, but there will be a follow-up of a second robotics facility. Yeah, see, he's thinking about this now. He's like, okay, I know exactly what you're doing. Immortal production time. He also finished that Templar Archives. Oh, nice what? find there. Oh, boy, those Corruptors got to get over there before the Phoenixes kill all of those Overlords. Yeah, you might want to invest in Overlord speed as well. It just as never happens again. Well, you just got to pull him back, like... Can't just let him be out there on the map. There's no reason for them to be there either. There's simply too many of them. Look at this. We're actually seeing a lot of aggression here now. These Corruptors, are they actually going to be enough to zone out everything and actually go for a base? Yeah, look at the anti-air here. It's that one count in two centuries oh, and three is, phoenixes. Two phoenixes. so lacking right now. He's going to lose the Colossus for it. 
This is insane. End of Warp Prism. Now the Corruptor's getting to work on the Phoenixes. Classic, you know, trying to transition into this very heavy harassment style with a lot of Immortals. Down goes the Mothership Core as well. These but you corruptors. look at the fourth base, a lot of Linux units out of position. Oh, yeah. Okay, that kind of even things up a little bit more. You know, he lost a couple of key units there, Mothership Core and the Colossus being them, but Do losing they... a fourth base like this, never a good thing. Yeah, I feel like I'm watching a TVZ right now with this much harassment coming down. Just three Zealots getting to work now on that Greater Spire that's morphing. Oh, if they actually kill that, it's going to be a hard press to do so. Transfuse as well going to help out a little bit. Two more Stargates on the way. Huh. I wonder. And he's already got one. So, well, he's going to have to start making some Void Rays now or some Tempests. And look at that. Archons are on the way as well. Maybe gearing up to go for an attack before the time comes. I mean, it's a mostly Ling army right now on the ground. A few roaches, about 11. Now, this is like a really entertaining style from Classic. Going to get a 15-minute blink against Zerg. Hasn't really made any stalkers up until this point where he's got five. And, yeah, just really hoping for that late game. I feel like I'm watching a mastermind Protoss at work at this point in time. Yeah, he's kind of reacting, though. He's, he's being very reactionary, and it might even be too late because he scouted that, that great Aspire, uh, you know, pretty late compared to when he threw down his Stargates. He's starting to make the Void Rays now, finally. But look <laughs> at that. Nine Broods are now on the way. Nine Broodlords. Behind this, though, look at the anti-air for Leenoth right now. This is going to be the next problem he's going to be encountering. He's making Corruptors. They're not going to be very useful at all against the Void Rays that are in production right now. And that is the only line of defense his Broodlords have, besides a small amount of Queens. Classic trying to get a fourth base up there, but right where Leenoth had his entire army, so not going to go down. Bunch of queens being made at the same time. Going to be trying to transfuse those Broodlords as much as possible. Yeah, that's actually going to bring it up to quite a healthy number, actually. Now that I look about it, all the queens that have gathered now, eight queens with these Corruptors, and with this many Broodlords. He's making three Tempests at a time now, but he needs to get them out ASAP. Oh, look at this. All the Speedlings coming into the natural now. No block at all. Going to take down the gateway. More counter harass here, but Classic may just lose his natural. I think he might just actually have to give it up before these Tempests come out. There's no way he can hold on here. He needs these Tempests to start sniping the Broodlords. Mother's of Core going to go down as well. No support at all for it. Wow. Unbelievable. Yeah. Yep. Big siege there at that natural. Look at this gigantic harass, though, at the same time. Just trying to backdoor Leenok, I suppose, at the same time. It's going to be soon two base to two base. Well, not a bad choice here. Now we do have the three Tempest out as well, as well as these Void Rays, but they're fighting <laughs> underneath Queens. Yeah, and look at the transfuse on that one Corruptor. I'm not even sure if one Corruptor went down. Well, still trying for it. There's only a few amount of Corruptors left over, which is the one redeeming thing, but I feel like the damage is going to be done before any of this army gets cleaned up. All the Broodlords now sieging into the main. Stargate's going down. Four or five Tempests are out at this point, but the Transfuses are real. Everything's staying alive. Yeah, for now, these Tempests are actually getting in range of these Queens. Oh, the Abducts are real. One Tempest going to go down, guaranteed. Luckily, another one came out, so he's still going to apply a lot of damage. Yeah. You know, as they do lose the energy there on those Queens, these this army will eventually be taken out. It's just going to take a lot of time, a lot of kiting here from Classic. And at the same time, he's right on top of the natural Leenok. Leenok only on two bases at this point as well. Yeah, and look at their armies right now. If Classic wasn't hardcore supply block right now, he could be warping in quite a scary army to deal with this. Oh, man. Look at that. He's not even remaking a bunch of pylons. I think he's just kind of flustered at this point in time. Yeah, I think he's too busy focusing on these temp uh, Tempest micro. He really wants to deal with these Brutalists, because now they're going to start working on the one remaining base he has. Yeah. Look at the sick banks here from both players. Oh, oh. the abducts. One Tempest is going to go down, and more and more Corruptors making their way across the map. He can't afford to be losing Tempest at this point in time. He really cannot be. He's moving across the map with his probes, though, so he can build elsewhere. But how are you going to fight these Broodlords? Only three remain, which I guess is a pretty big redeeming thing. And the army of Classic right now is still pretty scary over the other side of the map.
Yeah, so pretty scary. It looks like three drones, five drones in total are out on the map. Two Tempest still alive. One Viper there. Not going to be doing much. And it uh -oh. looks like the Queens are not underneath those Broodlords now. Oh, wow. And look at that. An Ultra on the way. And the, the one Nexus has been found out by Lings. He's moving across the map with them, too. There oh. you go. He's going to take it out. He's going to have to throw down something soon. Pylon goes down. Lings are chasing down the remaining probes as well. He's not paying attention. Classic incredibly flustered right now. Yeah, he really is. You can see it in this play. He's got two more pylons out on the map. It looks like he's going to make a nexus in the main here. There's one Broodlord <laughs> left, but there's two Tempests. But they're very, very far away from that Broodlord. The scary thing here is that there's Ultras are on the way. Three Ultras. But at the same the time, I mean, oh, they're look actually, at the army of Classic. The Ultras are actually being destroyed. The eggs are... Whoa. And <laughs> even if they pop, they would be out there alone wow. against a bunch of immortals. That's actually so big. The fact that he stopped these uh, ultras from hatching, that could just end the game. That can cause so many problems. There's so many links waiting. And there's one brutal that's going to start working on the Nexus. <laughs> <laughs> the army of classic desperately trying to kill the broodlings that come out. Do the blink. He's got four stalkers out on the map. Where are the Tempest right now? They're looking for that broodlord. Oh. Oh, it is so low at the same time. He's looking for it. He's found it. Oh, there it goes. I don't know. Linox really not got much left in this game. Well, he doesn't have much left, but he does have the money and he does have the supply. With these queens as well, everything's going to get zoned out for a little while longer. It might actually just come down to uh, Classic making a big play on the map. Because he's not going to find much mining here at all. Yeah. He's really just got this army, and that's about it. I think the hopes of Classic, you know, remaking his base or restarting his mining, he's got to be very careful with these Tempests. But yeah, the, the idea of him, like, remaking a base, remaking an army is uh, just a pipe dream at this point, I think. This, uh, this Oracle was flying around harassing the hatchery that was made. Pretty much, it wasn't full energy. <laughs> it's, it's looking for something here, but... This is such a hard place for both players to be in right now. Yep. Classic right now, long distance mining from the natural of Lenok. Lenok, it doesn't look like he's mining really at all. He's got four drones in total. Yeah, I guess he's, he's very afraid to mine at that hatchery because of the Oracle and the harassment it's doing. Yep. Oh, he's going to be mining from this base, though, and he's taking a base in the bottom left of the map, which is so far away from everything that Classic has. You know, maybe if he can resume mining and get some semblance of an army back up and together. You know, we're seeing it right now. That's all Classic has got on the map. And Classic, you know, he's not getting himself out of supply block either, which is interesting. He could be throwing down multiple pylons right now, but he's choosing not to. He finishes up his gateway, but he still is supply blocked right now. Yeah, I think he's finally beginning to realize, like, oh, I am uh, hugely supply blocked. I need to get pylons down, so... Two of them going to be thrown down for now. And he has found this base. He knows where Leonak is mining for oh, now. Oh, he cannot lose that Oracle. 10 HP left. Look at that. He's got one probe and one immortal and a warp prison. I think he's going to be looking for other bases out on the map. Yeah, not a bad choice. This kind of situation. Now, keep in mind that, you know, we can see everything that's going on, but Classic, of course, cannot. So he's not exactly sure where Leonak is at. In terms of, like, how much he's mining, maybe he's thinking, you know, does he have hidden bases? That's why he's sending that Oracle down there in the bottom left to scout everything. Yeah, he might. He should be afraid of Mutas, and Mutas are going to be on the way. That Spire has begun. He's That's on a great a move. Bit of a time limit right now. Looks like Classic's going to do what he thinks he has to and move out in the map and try and close this out with the army he has. It's so scary, though, because, as you said it, that's all he's got. He's moving out on creep. I don't think he has any detection with this army. No observers. He's got one oracle. The scary thing as well is the fact that so many lings are on the map and they're just looking to counterattack when the yeah. chance comes. Does he have a sentry back at the base? Can you check that for me? He's got yeah. one. He's got one and a bunch of uh, units over there as well. He's going to go for the hatchery snipe though with these two Tempests, double Archons. I don't know if Archons are the right choice here. Maybe you'd want to have Immortals. I guess either way, he's going to make this nearly impossible to mine from now. Yeah. 
going to be slowly poking at the drones, making sure they can't mine. But at the same time, with the Spire coming up and looking at the bank of Leenok, he can afford 11 Nidas once that does get up. So it's a very scary force. This Orkley sees all the drones. He's going to catch them. Oh, huge move here. Oh, so much damage. But, I mean, this is just... It's actually going to be Corruptors. Huh. Corruptors. <laughs> what? Well... I mean, it'll deal with the Tempest, I guess. I guess it frees up the map. I guess it frees up the map for Lino to take. I guess that's the way he's going to take it. I, I figured Mutas might be a little bit better because the anti-air is pretty lacking and it's never going to be kind of remade at Look this point. Look at this. The Oracle. Oh, He's going to kill every single drone over here. There's not even one Spore Crawler. But the Corruptors, I take that back. The Corruptors do spawn. <laughs> going to keep that base alive for now. Oh, wow. He actually gets one Tempest. Really nice snipe, and uh oh, uh, he's got two archetypes in the work for him. He's running away. Uh, he runs into Queen. Clean up. Unbelievable! He loses the other Tempest too. This is all that Classic has now. This is it. Leenog's going to create such an upset to start things off for Spenu. Here we go. The army's coming in desperate, but here we go with a swarm of Lings. Look at the Lings. He gets some really nice force fields down, but even the Queens in the back doing so much of corruption coming in. And it looks like Clash is going to go down. GG. Leenok wins game number one. Sickest upset. Leenok playing insane. What, what was that move made? <laughs> I can't believe it. Really beautiful stuff from Leenok making all the right choices. Straight to Broods. And what a crazy game. Classic was just not prepared from it. And after that, that scrappy game. Insane. Really well done. Yeah. What an upset. I don't think a single caster voted for Leenok. You can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it was 06 in favor of Classic. I mean, this guy is a Zerg killer. He's on a huge roll. He's got that upwards red arrow, but that big, big upset tonight. And maybe that's exactly what Spenu needed to have some kind of chance here against SKT. Wow. Okay, SKT going to be sitting back in their chairs going like, huh, all right. I guess we got a game in our hands. These guys are coming in very prepared right now. We were not expecting Leon to be playing this good. And now it's going to be Sue versus Dong Gu to follow things up. Can Dong Gu follow that momentum? Taking down one of the tyrants of SKT, the best Protoss player they have right now. That's like a huge move for Spenu, you know? Winning that first map, you get so much momentum against the best Protoss player in the world. And ZBC, it's a funny matchup. Maybe Sue's gonna be like, oh wow, that actually happened. I gotta be on my game. But at the same time, are we really gonna see Dongregu give Sue his first ZBZ lost. Sue right now is 9-0 in hey ZBZ. Anything can happen at this point. <laughs> and Sue only just came back from Germany. He got his sixth second place in a row. You know what? He might not be where he wants to be right now. He might not be on top of his game like he has been all season. Now that he's kind of had a bit of a repeat of what happened last year. Yeah, his confidence could be hit. Super sad. Super um, sad. I like super that. Super sad. Uh, losing to his teammate again. <laughs> 